Look at that front, retro design, really awesome look. And the rectangular data running light, another spicy element. Main headlamp unit comes from LED as standard. Ionic 5, yes, they also separate it a little bit from the other cars, but still they carry the Hyundai badge. And here we can also see the full light signature at night here. The length at 4 meters 63 or 182 inches. It's a mid-size segment, but a little bit shorter than other mid-size vehicles. This one will also be a little bit shorter than the platform brother, the Kia EV6. And in the rear, they continue with this, I would call it retro tech design, also here with the tail lamp signature. I just love it, like Knight Rider kid style, something like that. Contrasting elements in the lower end right here. And does it house a frunk? Yes, it does. And EV, okay, now we all know that's an electric vehicle. <laughs> okay. And yeah, the space is somewhat limited in the front though. Hmm. And when we are here at the front, usually with combustion engines, we talk about the acceleration figures. Let's do it right now here because you have different models, rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. And if you have the rear wheel drive model, the slowest one, 8.5 seconds. And the fastest one with all wheel drive is 5.2 seconds in the acceleration figure. That's already quite quick then. And two different battery sizes available, 58 kilowatt hours or 73 kilowatt hours. Pricing then somewhat 40 to 50,000 euros or dollars depending on the battery size and rear wheel drive or all wheel drive, which one you pick. For the range, what does that mean? So with our testing consumption of something 18 kilowatt hours or more in kilometers or 27, 28 kilowatt hours on 100 miles with a small battery around 320 kilometers or 200 miles and for the bigger battery more than 400 kilometers or more than 250 miles. And recharging, Hyundai promises 10 to 80 percent in less than 20 minutes with fast charging. First of all here the charging flap, 11 kilowatt AC and maximum 220 kilowatt DC charging. Then you can here press it here to close it again. But we have a fast charger here now and 70% charge at the moment because we all know when you add like 10% it does still quite well. But what about the charging curve? So we put it in here now the fast charger. And what we can see here, even at 75% of the battery state of charge, more than 120 kilowatt. That's extremely impressive. Hyundai says they developed their own fast charging technology right there and it's working very, very well even here at this high state of charge. Very impressive. So this is where they are leading at the moment together with Porsche and Audi who are using these RIMAC technology or RIMATS when you really call them that way. And the Ionic 5 entry badge. Nice floor mats also and this is high trim by the way. The steam wheel also with an interesting fabric like material here on the inside where the airbag pops out. Now everything is kind of shut down. Soon we'll also light that up and then you see everything with the steering wheel and so on. Two times 12 and three inch screens at the moment shut off. Also soon more to that. And then the seats, they would start with black fabric. That's the best choice to go. This is the optional animal skin pack. Of course, it doesn't make sense for any sustainable car and it's of course not animal friendly. And also you can see here, seating position is kind of like compact hatch style, I would say. Then steering wheel, manual up and down and also in and out. And headroom here with one wheel A6 or six with one. Still plenty left. Interior overview here with this clean dual screen setup and a bright layer. This is quite rare. Usually you have black bezels here. They went for a different design right here. This is then also soft touch. And I really like the clean layout they have here. But the user interface, is it the best? Mm, kind of not. You have the volume knob still, but then for example, the climate, dials are here with these capacitive buttons and the question is again why and the digital instruments and that's where we for example change the driving mode and they're actually clear to read you have the speed right there and also then the projected range on the right side you have a nice head-up display it's a good option and also with some gps integration if you have a root set infotainment system you might expect with the modern charging technology that they went for something modern in the infotainment system but they didn't so the standard Hyundai Kia infotainment system, you know, it's a little bit wider, but it's nothing. I mean, our smartphones were far further, you know, like five years ago. So, um, so best is to take Apple CarPlay and that auto. And this integration is awesome. One of the best integrations using all the way of the screen. One of the best integration we've seen here with the Apple CarPlay and the Bose sound system also delivers a very great true sound.
So the car internal infotainment system, CarPlay integration, yay. Still offering animal skin seats, but the offering of space and the roomish concept, this is awesome. Showing you this here, see another perspective here, where there's space in the open front. Finally, someone is using that in the AV. And then here, a lot of space also underneath with the armrest. And you can put this whole thing up. And this is really awesome. I mean, you can put like large handbags here, maybe even a backpack or something. So this is actually very well executed. Well, that's a very good result. A lot of space in the rear. This is not a long vehicle, but the usage of space here, enormous. So really super spacious here. It's not a long vehicle at all, but that is really impressive. So uh, would be even better if the seat would be a little bit higher, then you can put your feet better underneath it in the rear. It's very comfortable and also enough headroom. So very impressive by the rear result. Then you can also put this angle here a little bit steeper or more in this, you know, laying back position. And it's so easy to switch here also to the middle position. So five tall adults is an easy exercise here for the Ionic 5. 500 liters up to 1,600 liters approximately. Wide opening, easy access to the trunk. And then, well, this cover here is a little bit wobbly and it's also not high enough. I'll soon show you. But the rest of the trunk is actually quite well usable with a meter or 40 inches length, almost a meter or 40 inches. So that's totally okay but it's actually quite shallow, so I, I can show you that with a backpack. So when I put the backpack right here, yeah, that's hmm, not that good. So maybe just put this whole thing out. Welcome to the driving part of the Ionic 5, and we start here in busy Valencia city traffic. It's a good way to find out more about the recuperation and you can switch it around here actually with the shifting pedals. Level zero would be you lift the throttle, the car is rolling. Then with the left pedal, you can increase the recuperation. Level one, level two, level three. And this is already when I lift the throttle, a strong recuperation, so strong braking then to gain back the energy. And one more, so-called I pedal. And this is then the strongest recuperation. And this is then the one pedal driving feeling. So when I lift, foot of throttle here I, I leave it a little bit even while rolling then I stand still and this way I can really just drive with the throttle pedal and I hardly ever use the brake pedal just in an emergency situation where I really really need it. What you also realize is when you're here stuck in city traffic this open space surrounding here you know where everything has a lot of room this really helps also in narrow city traffic because when everything around you feels kind of caged in and narrow, but here on the inside, everything feels spacious. That's a very, very good feeling. And also how everything resonates here from the switch gear and so on. When you touch, for example, a turning indicator, it's a really good build quality. And that also helps here while driving to feel somewhat just, you know, well and somewhat also sophisticated. It's also not too big for our vehicle, so in the city traffic you really feel at home and you can also easily get a parking spot and so on and so on. So for city, good vehicle actually, and then you also have advantages if you compare it to really big EVs, for example. Whee! <laughs> Next generation here in the city, that was kind of like 0 to 50. And that's it. And since we have the all-wheel drive model here, boost from both engines, Still, it has a uh, rear-wheel bias, so because it's a rear-wheel platform, if you have just one motor, you have just a rear-wheel drive. And this way here in the all-wheel drive, the rear motor is still the strongest one. I have the top all-wheel drive model here, which is at 5.2 seconds in the acceleration to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour. That is really impressive. So, I mean, this car doesn't make the sportiest appearance or something, also doesn't feel sportiest as for, you know, driving feel and so on. But then it has this boost of power. That's really amazing. However, the steering here is actually really precise and feels very good. So there's no dead zone area, very precise commands. Suspension wise, there is just one suspension available. It's a normal steel suspension, no adaptive suspension available or something. But so far it's doing a good job. It's not laid out too soft. 
we have that quite a lot of times that with the electric vehicles they are rather a little bit stiffer or so. But actually so far I'm, I'm very happy with that. Now we are getting on the motorway. See also more about the acceleration when we are already at speed. So I'll wait till the exit and we can then accelerate up to 100. So I do now five, uh, 50 kilometers to 100. Let's go. Plop, that's it. So even that really quick. I mean, the all-wheel drive model, yes, the strongest one here. Do you really need it? It's the most fun in acceleration, but you'll also be just fine with some of the less strong versions because they're really so powerful. I pedal here, getting off the throttle, cars getting in front of me, directly good recuperation, no problem at all. And noise insulation here at one kilometers or 60 miles an hour, still fairly good. So. Actually, oh, I think I have to stay here. Sorry about that. Yeah, but <laughs> that also shows this car is really also flexible as for the lane changing. Again, quite stable from suspension. At the same time, good comfort and really a lot of fun to steer it around. So the driving fun factor with this vehicle is really very, very good. And the elect that is electric just contributes to that. A very spontaneous reaction. I can easily also live with the rear wheel drive. We also have that in the Tesla Model 3 where we compared all wheel drive to the rear wheel drive. Of course, you have always more punch with the all wheel drive versions, but then the rear wheel drive versions, they seem to just come around in the corner a little bit more because you are just getting pushed from the rear and that's it. And that can be sometimes just be a better feeling. And here now about 120 kilometers an hour, so about 70 miles an hour, still very stable on the road. and. Noise insulation wise, we're not picking up any disturbing wind noise anywhere. So even at this speed, which would be the maximum speed here in Spain, also on the motorway. Uh, these are the motorways in Spain, I know. <laughs> so this is still a very good result. And I mean, when the motorways here are a little bit more curvy, that's also the reason why the speed is not too high. And then also in this area, really a lot of fun once again to steer this car around. Oh, by the way, I'm not sure if you see that here, when I have the left turning indicator here on the motorway, I have like the camera from the side mirror and right again here. And this is another blind spot helper. So when I use the right turning indicator, small camera image appears from the right side next to me. Also a great safety feature. We, uh, we've known that recently from the Genesis G80, uh, this was a very interesting feature and so what you see here also the, the top luxury cars they have inside the corporation also this vehicle here which is not top luxury class but more in the price performance ev segment still receives all the big tech stuff they have available by the way here since we drove a little bit faster on the motorway Consumption now went up around 22, 23 kilowatt hours on one kilometer. So that would be more than, definitely way more than 30 kilowatt hours on one miles. So we see that on higher motorway driving where Tesla even has more advantage because the Tesla consumption does not go up that much when you drive a little bit faster on the motorway at the Polestar 2 and here also for the Ionic 5 and also for the Kia EV6. That is actually the case and then here our range with the big battery for constant, you know, like 120 kilometers or 70 miles. Now our motorway driving would be less than 4 kilometers or less than 250 miles. So is it now the best electric vehicle in the price performance sector out there now? It's a very, very good electric vehicle. But to me, it's not the best because in Botanic system wise, the Polestar 2 and the Tesla Model 3 are definitely way ahead. Tesla, of course, also with the supercharging infrastructure and also with the efficiency of the electric motors. This one here, however, very good in the charging technology. That's where it is actually ahead. And overall, a very, very good package they're offering.